combinations of springs when springs are in series and parallel and finding the total spring constant of the combinations is a popular a-level physics exam question in this video we are going to see where those formulae come from i mean not just what the formulae are but where do they really come from let's have a look consider two springs that are connected in series and let's say the first one has a spring constant k1 and the second one has a spring constant k2. Now, think about the spring that is equivalent to that. So, we call the spring constant kt for k total. Now, we exert a force on this one. Say the force is capital F. Obviously, we have to exert the same force here. The forces are both capital F, capital F. Now, the extension of this one and this one are different because they have different spring constants. So, let's call this x1. And let's call this one x2. And let's say the total extension of this second spring is just xt. Now we know x total is the same as x1 and x2. However, we know the formula f is equal to kx from Hooke's law. So if I make x the subject, I can see that gives me f over k. So I can substitute this for each one of these. So I get x total is f divided by k total is equal to x1 is the same force f divided by k1 plus f over k2. Now I can clearly see I can cross them out. So I'm left with the formula 1 over k total is equal to 1 over k1 and 1 over k2. So the idea is when you have number of springs that are connected in series to get the total spring constant k total you use the formula 1 over k total equals 1 over k1 plus 1 over k2. Basically you add the reciprocals up which is equal to the reciprocal of the total spring constant kt. Now let's consider two springs that are connected in parallel. Say the total spring constant which is equivalent to the first combination let's call it kt the force exerted here is f here's the same force but obviously the force will split up between k1 and k2 the two springs now let's say the force that goes to this one is f1 and the force that goes to this one is f2 they are not the same because k1 and k2 are different they were identical obviously this force will split equally but this time it will not split equally because they are not the same now we know capital f here is the sum of f1 and f2 because you get f1 and f2 as a result of f splitting up now let's use the formula f is equal to kx so f which is this one here is ktx and f1 here's the same extension same extension so f1 is k1 x and f2 is k2 x now i can divide the whole thing by x so all of the x's get cancelled out so i get k total is equal to k1 and k2 so the idea is if we have two or more springs that are connected in parallel to find the total k you just add them up it's useful to understand this, that this is exact opposite of how the resistors work. So in resistors, when they are in series, you just add them up. Here, when they are in series, you take the reciprocal and vice versa. Let's put this into practice. Here's a question. Please pause the video and give this a try. When you want to check the answer, press play. Two identical light springs each have a spring constant 400 newtons per meter. The springs are connected in series and the system extends by 0.1 meters. That is the extension. Calculate the effective spring constant. These springs are connected in series. So the formula is 1 over k total is 1 over k k1 plus 1 over k2 and let's substitute the values you get 1 over k total is 1 over 400 and 1 over 400 so we know 1 over k total is 2 over 400 which i can simplify so the effective spring constant is 200 newtons per meter part a the spring constant then the force applied all i need to do is use f is equal to k x the force we don't know the spring constant is the effective spring constant 200 times by 0.1 and the force here is 20 newtons 
Now in part B, the springs are connected in parallel and the same force is applied. Now we just worked out in part A that the force is 20 newtons. Calculate the extension. Now that's pretty easy. F is equal to Kx. Force is 20 newtons. The spring constant, when they are in parallel, K total is simply the sum of the spring constants. That's 400 times 2, 800 newtons per meter. So let's use 800 there times by X. And the extension is 0 0.025 meters. Done. Part C. Explain why extension in B differs from that in A. Now, if you look at the spring constants of the two situations, right? Now, in situation one, the two springs are connected in series. In the second one, part B, they are connected in parallel like this. Now, the overall spring constant here is 200. Overall spring constant here is 800. Now, F is equal to Kx. The extension is force divided by K. Now, it's the same force that we apply. So obviously, the higher the spring constant, the smaller the extension and vice versa. So here's the conclusion. In parallel, the effective spring constant is larger. So for the same force, the extension is smaller according to Hooke's law. Here's another question for you. Post the video and give this a try. And you can check the answer when you are ready. Here's the answer. Three identical light springs labeled A, B, and C are connected as shown. Okay, so we know they are identical. So let's say the spring constants are K, 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 and K. Springs A and B are attached at their upper ends to a fixed horizontal support. As you can see it here, their lower ends are connected to a light horizontal bar, which is this one here. Spring C hangs vertically from the center of this bar and supports a load. All springs obey Hooke's law and have the same spring constant. The extension of spring A is X. Okay, so we know here the extension is X. Determine in terms of X the extensions of spring B and C. Now, this is actually quite easy because imagine the weight of this one is W. So, obviously, half of that will go here because this one is a symmetrical system so the tension here is w here it will be half of w and here it will be half of w now if this is x obviously this will have the same extension so spring b the extension will be x spring c let's see what the extension is now think about the formula f is equal to k x now for the spring up here spring b or even spring A, the force is halved, right? So for W over 2 force, spring constant is K and extension is X. So I just wrote F equals KX for this one. Here. Let's do the same thing for this spring here. F is W, K is just K, X is, let's call it X dash. This is your equation 1, this is your equation 2. Now we can simplify this, so let's divide 2 by 1. Divide the left hand sides, W divided by W over 2. Divide the right hand sides, KX dash divided by KX. These two Ks get cancelled out, X dash over. Now you can clearly see this W and this W get cancelled out. This X go to the other side. So I can show that X dash is 2X. So the extension of spring 2 is twice as much 2X. Now, although I did this question mathematically like that, you can just think about the simple proportionality, then that can be done as well. F is equal to Kx. Now, if you think about spring A and spring C, they both have the same spring constant K. Now, remember, we are not thinking about the combination at this point. We are considering each individual spring. They have the same spring constant K. So obviously, F is proportional to X. Now, look at the force here. Here the force is W over 2 for A. Here the force is W. So for W over 2, if the extension is X, for W, obviously, it should be 2x. You can just think about the direct proportionality and you get exactly the same answer like before. Now, here's the third approach. 
you can just think about the total of the springs A and B. Obviously, these are in parallel, so you just add them up. So this one has a spring constant of 2, K, okay? and spring C, the spring constant is K. Now you can see for all of them, it is the same force, W. Now, for this combination, I can use F is equal to Kx. So F is W, spring constant of the combination is 2K, but we know the question clearly says this is X. So let's leave this as X. Now let's do the same thing for this spring here. F is W, K is just 1K, the extension call it X dash. Now you can see, call this equation 1 and call this equation 2. They both have the same thing on the left hand side, W. w. So obviously I can equate the right hand sides. So I get 2kx is equal to kx dash. The k's get cancelled out and I can again get x dash, which is the extension of c, is 2x. Done. Here's one last question for you. This is a really good question. Pause the video and give this a try. Let's check the answer. Several identical light springs all have the same spring constant k. So let's mark that first. They are connected to fixed supports in different arrangements and each arrangement supports a vertical load as shown in the diagrams. You can see 6 newtons, 8 newtons, 3 and 2 different amounts. For each arrangement, the springs obey Hooke's law and the connecting bars are light and rigid. Part A. For each arrangement, determine how the effective spring constant of the system compares with K. Now, all we need to think about is how we find the total spring constant, overall spring constant in series and parallel arrangements. Now, the first one, three Ks are parallel. When they are parallel, you just add them up. So, the effective spring constant here is 3 Okay. This one here, two of them in parallel, it will be 2k. Okay. Here, two of them in series, it will be k over 2. Now, you can quickly tell this because these two are identical. So, simply what happens is 1 over k total is 1 over k and 1 over k. k is the common denominator. 1 over k total is 2 over k. So, obviously, kt is the reciprocal of that k over now you can use the same thing here. So we know we are going to get K over three. Part A, done. Part B, hence determine which arrangement produces the greatest extension of the springs. You should justify your answer by considering how the force is shared between the springs. Right, now let's think about F is equal to Kx here. So we know extension is force divided by spring constant. Now for all of them, we know the force. So extension one is force is six divided by three K. Here eight divided by two K. Here three divided by K over two. And finally here X four is two divided by K over three. Now let's simplify this further. X one is two over K. X two is 4 over x3, this 2 goes to the top, 6 over k, and last one is also 6 over k. So now we can clearly see the last two have the same extension, and first one and the second one, the second one has a great extension. So which arrangement, so there are two answers to this one, arrangements 3 and 4, they both have the same extension, which is greater than first two anyway. So they're both 6 over k, 6 over k, so 3 and 4 both done.